Let's appreciate the worship team. I, we can do better. Let's appreciate the worship team. Thank you so much for helping us to worship our Father. Good morning and praise the Lord. You look so nice from here. Even those of us who are at the tent, I see you, you look good. I can see those waves. And it's so glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning. This is the best place you could be in. Because your father has been waiting for you. And it can't be a complete service before we read his word, his message to us. And therefore, this time, for the next few minutes, we want to share God's word. Whenever you interact with the word of God, something good happens. Whenever you rub your shoulders with the word, the greatness of the word of God, something happens. And I pray that something happens to your life this morning. This reminds me the day I gave my life to Jesus many years ago. I still remember the word that was spoken. And the speaker said that a day will come when the Lord will say sorry I never knew you go and serve the one you served before and that one took a toll on me and I realized I better not be known by anybody but be known by God and I'm glad so I'm so glad this morning that the Lord knows my name. And my name is written in his book of life. And I'm preparing for that eternity. Therefore, I want you to tell your mind. The Lord has a message for me and I want to hear it this morning. And this morning I want us to share on a topic. When the assignment looks impossible. The assignment looks impossible. And I would want us to read from the book of Nehemiah chapter 1. I know it's a long reading, but we shall try our best. Nehemiah chapter 1, it's from only 11 verses we are going to read together. If you can project it for us. And you are going to help me read. Let's make use of the school fees. Those of us who can, okay? Amen. We make use of our school fees. All right, let's go together. These are the mamas. Allah, apana. Tell your neighbor. Tafadhali fugua mdomo na umewekewa. Saba, usisome na roho. This time around, let's read together. Okay, and lead with an attitude. Okay? Amen. An attitude leading to understand and to soak in the message. Okay. Let's go together. These are the mamas of Nehemiah, son of Hakariah. In late Altam, in the mount of Kislev, in the 20th year of King Ataxis reign, I was at the fortress of Susa. Hanani, one of my brothers, came to visit me with some other men who had just arrived from Judah. I asked them about the Jews who had returned there from captivity and about how things were going in Jerusalem. They said to me, things are not going well for those who return to the province of Judah. They are in great trouble and disgrace. The wall of Jerusalem has been torn down and the gates have been destroyed by fire. When I heard this, I sat down and wept. In fact, for days, I moaned, fasted, and prayed to the God of heaven. Then I said, O Lord God of heaven, the great and awesome God who keeps his covenant of unfailing love with those who love him and obey his commands. Listen to my prayer. Look down and see me praying night and day for your people, Israel. I confess that we have sinned against you. Yes, even my own family and I have sinned. 
We have sinned terribly by not obeying the commands, decrees, and regulations that you gave us through your servant Moses. Please remember what you told your servant Moses. If you are unfaithful to me, I'll scatter you among the nations. But if you return to me and obey my commands and live by them, then I to the edge of the earth, I will bring you back to the place I have chosen for my name to be honored. The people you rescued by your great power and strong hand are your servants. Oh Lord, please hear my prayer. Listen to the prayers of those of us who delight in honoring you. Please grant me success today by making the king favorable to me Put it into his heart to be kind to me. In those days, I was the king's cup bearer. I love it. I love where it has ended. He was a cup bearer. But whatever it is that he was doing in the king's palace, it never changed his ident- Nehemiah's identity. He was still very much concerned. About whatever was happened to the other Jews outside there. You can be sure when he was at the Paris, he was enjoying the comfort and the protection in the Paris. But he never forgot his brethren who were in Jerusalem. Nehemiah was one of those remnants. He had also come back from exile. And I want to say three things about Nehemiah. Nehemiah had friends. We have just read and maybe you can project it for us in verse 2. He had friends. Hanani, one of my brothers, came to visit me with some other men who had just arrived from Judah. I asked them about the Jews who had returned there from captivity and about how things were going on in Jerusalem. Hold it there. This brother, let me call him for this time. Before we, You know we know him for rebuilding the wall, but by now he has not yet started. But he was so concerned about the others. He had friends who came to catch up with him, who came to check on him. And I'm talking to people here this morning. And I hope you have got some friends who can come and check on you. In our, in our April edition of DOI, we were taught on the topic social capital. And we were reminded it matters who knows you and who whom you know and who knows you. For God to meet your needs, he will use somebody. For God to meet your needs, he will use somebody. The fact that Hanani knew Nehemiah and he came to check up on him Nehemiah had an opportunity to know to get the update of what was happening in Jerusalem. And I guess it was during testimony time. They were just, it is, I'm paraphrasing yeah? You know where, 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 where I grew up? When two people would meet mothers or fathers. I don't know why they were never in a hurry. Or if they visited you. And I can see some smiles. So I guess it's not only where I come from. They used to be very intentional in giving their testimony. Even before they have the cup of tea. It was testimony time. And Nehemiah decided to find out from his friend Hanani and the other brothers. How the other brethren were doing in Jerusalem. And it's like Hanani was waiting to be asked. He said things are not good there. Things are bad there. The brethren back in Jerusalem are in a lot of disgrace. Because the walls are broken. The gates are burnt down. And people are laughing at them. 
And in verse 4, and maybe you can project for us, verse 4. Mstari wa nne. When Nehemiah, it was testimony time. When Nehemiah had this testimony. Alipo sikia uye ushuhuda. Can we read together? When I had this, I sat down and wept. In fact, for days, I mourned, fasted, and prayed to the God of heaven. Hold it there. And I want to talk to the people listening to me this morning. I don't know your reaction when you hear what is happening in Gedorai. Let's come back here. I don't know what is your reaction when you hear what is happening to the brethren in Kahawa Wedani. Do you get the burden? Do you get the concern? Do you show interest? Je, unakuwa na mzigo? Je, unakuwa ukiwafikiria? And we can pick a few things from Nehemiah here. Tunaweza pata maneno machache katika Nehemiah. He was so touched by that by whatever was happening to the other brethren. Aligusika sana na yale ambayo alikuwa anachendekea ndugu zake. Because the walls were broken. Kwa sababu ukuta ulikuwa umefungwa. And I am here to bring us to remind each one of us today. We are living among people whose walls are broken. There are those of us and they are, maybe they are listening to me this morning. Their children are home for school fees. They have no food. They don't know what to do. But you know what? Nehemiah was far. He was in the king's palace. But he knew there is something he could do. The we have just led. That he sat down. He mourned. He prayed. He fasted. And I'm here to remind everyone listening to me. Each one of us needs to be an intercessor. Each one of us needs somebody to pray for them. I don't know how you feel. When you are feeling so dark down and then you meet somebody and she tells you or he tells you I was praying for you I was I had a burden for you and your family yesterday somebody wrote me an, a message and she told me I don't know why I've been praying for you and your children by name in fact she said I've been praying even for your grandchildren and I think she was only remembering Masharia Masharia is the, the oldest, the oldest grandchild the last few weeks I've really been praying for you and you, are, you and bishop your children and your grandchildren and when she told me that I told I, I responded to the message I confirm I really needed those prayers me and my children we needed those prayers and my grandchildren if you know you know Amen. It feels so good when somebody when God gives you a burden for somebody. You never know why God wants you to stand in the gap. Instead of sharing her about whatever is happening in her life with your friends. You can share the story with God. Because God is always relevant. So Nehemiah decided to talk about that story to God of heaven. Remember he was a cup bearer. And he's talking about people living in, uh, in Jerusalem where the walls are broken. And as he continued praying it looks like the burden became heavier and heavier. Until finally he couldn't hold it. In fact, it was so serious. He didn't know how to face his boss, the king. And I think he was a jore worker. Maybe I'm waiting your appetite to go and read the book of Nehemiah. Because when finally he decided he hold the bull by the horns. And he decided I'm a cup bearer by, but I can become a war rebuilder. But there is one thing he did. 
kitu kimoja alikifanya. He decided to engage heaven before going to engage the people. Aliamua kwanza kuhusisha mbigu ili kabla yeye kwenda kwa watu. Before he went to engage the king. Kabla ya kwenda kwa eneo mfalme. Because he realized he needed the blessing of the king. Kwa sababu alijua anahitaji baraka ya mfalme. He needed permission. Alihitaji kupewa nafasi. He needed resources. Alihitaji rasilimali. And he knew his boss could do it. Na alijua mfalme anaweza fanya. But he knew he he could do it better if god of heaven would speak to him angejua kama angefanya vizuri mambo ya mungu wa mbinguni yangeweza nenea and that's why he decided to pray about the issue na kaanza kuomba kwa sababu ya hiyo hali because he had an assignment which was bigger than him kwa sababu alikuwa na majukumu ambayo ni makubwa kumliko there is no way we are told that nehemiah had an experience of rebuilding walls hatukuambiwa maoti ya kwamba alikuwa ana uzoefu wa kujenga ukuta i'm trying to imagine his wages as a cup bearer i can imagine the amount may not be able to rebuild a Naangalia kazi yake kwa kwale kwa ufalme haikuwa mshahara wake na hapo ana uwezo wa kujenga ukuta. But God has given him a burden. Lakini Mungu amempatia mzigo. An assignment. Majukumu. Mission impossible. Ile ambayo ilikuwa inaonekana kwa ni uwezekano. It is God's assignment. Lakini kwa sababu ni ya Mungu. It becomes his bill. Inakuwa ni yeye kutoka kwa Mungu. It becomes his bill. Yeye ni mwenye kupeana. God will becomes his bill. Ile ambayo ni ya Mungu yeye na yeye ataweza kupeana. 2 weeks ago wiki mbili zilizopita I was praying nilikuwa nikiomba and as I was praying I don't know why how it start it it uh, ended up becoming like uh, we are engaging with God ni kama naniuliza swali na nini namjibu and uh, oh I spoke in Swahili all right okay and this was the first question na hili ilikuwa swali la kwanza God asked me Mungu akaniuliza what have I said nimesema nini about you kuhusu wewe Oh, I knew the answer. Nikajua jibu. Oh, you have said you love me. Umesema unanipenda. You s- like a nipple of an eye. You went to prepare a place for me. Ulienda kuandaa mahali kwa ajili yangu. You watered my coming in and my going out. Uliangalia kuingia kwangu na kuondoka. And I told God a few things about what I know he has said about me. Na nikasema mambo kuhusu ambayo najua alisema kuhusu. I thought we are done. Nikadhani tumemalizia pale. He asked me the second question. Swali la pili akaniuliza. Okay. What do people say about you? Je, watu wanasema nini kukuhusu? Wa? I told him. Nikamwambia. Some say I am good. Wengine wanasema nini mzuri? Some say I am bad. Wengine wanasema nini mbaya? Some say I am short. Wengine wanasema nini mkubwa? Some say I am big. Wengine wanasema nini mkubwa? And they are all right because they have their own reasons. Na wao wako na ukweli kwa sababu wana sababu zao. So I told him a few things about what what I know people say like maybe what you, if you have ever told me what you eh. Nikamwambia okay. mama chache kunihusu. Then finally there was a third question. Kulikuwa na swali la tatu. What do you say about yourself? Je, wewe unasema nini kujihusu wenyewe? I didn't know that was the hardest question. Sikujua kwamba hilo ni swali gumu sana. I ask myself what do I say about myself? Nikajiuliza najiambia nini mimi mwenyewe? And when I was still there wondering what I trying to you know ni kama all of a sudden sijui kikuyu sijui kiswahili sijui kiingereza sina majibu nyingi sana you know unaulizwa maswali some of the questions you are asked you know zikini haujui sasa volume inaenda chini but I like how the spirit of the Lord encouraged me na ninipenda jinsi roho wa Mungu alihimiza and this was the answer na jibu lilikuwa hili it would not you will be okay utakuwa sawa if you repeated what i said about you ukirudia kila ambacho nimesema kukuhusu and you tell yourself na ujiambie did you hear what i said je umesikia kile nimesema so what has god said about you mungu amesema nini kukuhusu just pick that one chukua hicho you are allowed to copy and paste chukua hiyo na ujeke and now start telling yourself na uanze kujiambia that god has said i am good mungu amesema mimi ni mwema that god has said i am the head and not the tail mungu amesema mimi ni kichwa wala si mkia that god has said i will make it mungu amesema nitaweza what you tell yourself kila ambacho unajiambia don't be surprised that if you fa- if you discovered kama ungetambua that you are the chief critic about yourself ya kwamba you are the chief critic You criticize yourself more than anybody else. Ya kwamba wewe mwenyewe ndio unajichunguza kuliko mtu watu wengine. You have very little if any to say about yourself. Ya kwamba uko na mambo machache sana kusema juu yako. I hope I'm communicating. But from today, lakini kuanzia leo, I have got good news. Niko na habari njema. I want you im- When you catch yourself talking negative about yourself. Ukipata ukiongea kinyume kujihusu. Just because you started a certain business and it didn't work. Sababu ulianza biashara na ikaanguka. You will tell yourself. Utajiambia. That God is a God of many beginnings. Mimi ni Mungu ni Mungu. I can start a fresh. Nitaanza tena. Tell yourself what God has said about you. Jiambie kila ambacho Mungu amesema kukuhusu. 
Proverbs 3, 5 to 6. We will revise the issue of Nehemiah. Proverbs 3, 5 to 6 in amplified version. Zaburi Tatu. Not Tatu. Zaburi. Medari. Oh, Medali, sorry. 3, 5 to 6 in amplified version. Trust in the Lord and rely confidently on the Lord with all your heart. And do not rely on your own insight or understanding. In all your ways, know and acknowledge and recognize him, and he will make your path straight and smooth, removing obstacles that broke your way. And it looks like Nehemiah had this revelation. That trusting in God, hold that verse there, please. Nehemiah had this revelation. That if he acknowledged God in the assignment he is being given. That God, in verse 6. That God is able to remove all the obstacles that broke his way. And I don't know what the blocks that are blocking your way this morning. I love it in the message version, the same verse. The, the, it says, trust God from the bottom of your heart. Don't try to figure out everything on your own. Listen for God's voice in everything you do. Everywhere you go, he is the one who will keep you on track. I'm here to encourage somebody this morning. They are saying things are tough. And in fact, they are tough for that this kingdom. But you don't belong to this kingdom. The kingdom, the economy of our God is not dictated by the kingdom of this world. Do you know Elijah was fed for three and a half years when there was famine all over? He never missed a meal. I am here to encourage somebody. They are talking so much about the finance bill. And maybe you are wondering how you will move on and how you will continue. I am here to tell you stop figuring it out. It will just bring you doubts about God. Discouragement. Lack of faith. Yet the Bible says that without faith it is impossible to praise God. I'm um, however not ignorant that unanswered prayers becomes one of the major sources of discouragement to us as believers. When you have prayed about something and you are not getting the answers you get easily discouraged. But it looks like Nehemiah had a different attitude. He had a different prayer plan. And I would want us to pick a few things from the story of Nehemiah when he got this assignment. You may call it a burden, but to him it became a mission, an assignment which had to be accomplished. He acknowledged his limitations. But he knew if it is God who has said it, it will be done. In Nehemiah chapter 1 and verse 11, it is the conclusion of his passionate prayer to God. This is what he said. Oh Lord, please hear my prayer. Listen to the prayers of those of us who delight in honoring you. Please grant me success today by making the king favor, favorable to me. Put it into his heart to be kind to me. He owned the assignment so much. Hold that verse. He owned the assignment so much that now it was, it was him and God. Oh Lord, please hear my prayer. Listen to the prayers of those of us who delight in honoring you. Please grant me success today by making 
making the king favorable to me. Kwa ufanye mfalme awe awe atupatie kibali. I want to believe as he was praying. Na mimi alipokuwa akiomba. He realized the king will be part of his team. Alijua mfalme atakuwa mmoja wapo wa kikundi chake. To accomplish his mission. Ila aweze kuhitimisha mission yake. So he was talking to God about the king before he talked to the king. Alikuwa anahusisha mfalme kwa Mungu kabla yeye kuongea na mfalme. And he ends up by saying In those days I was the king's cup bearer. Wakati huo mimi nilikuwa nikimshughulikia mfalme. And I'm here to talk to somebody. Niko hapa kuongelesha mtu. Make it a habit to engage God before engaging men. Ifanye tabia kumhusisha Mungu kabla ya kuhusisha watu. You already know the person who can give you business. Unajua mtu ambaye anaweza kupatia biashara. Can you make it a habit to talk to God? Ifanye tabia kumwenena kwa Mungu. About that. Kuhusu hiyo. Before you go to that person. Kabla ya kumwendea yule mtu. And then he says no. Na anasema anapata And then you come and engage the brethren. Na unaenda kumhusisha yule mtu. So that you may come and make a prayer of agreement. Na ili ufanye ombi na kukubaliana. We can borrow a leaf from Nehemiah. Tunaweza kuchukua mfano kwa Nehemiah. He decided to engage his knees. Alianza kwa, kwa magoti before engaging his mouth. Kabla yeye kuingiza katika mdomo. And it is a practice that has been done by several successful men and women in the world of God. Ambaye imefanyika na wale ambao watu wana ufanisi duniani. We read that Esther asked his maid, her maid servants to pray and fast with her before she went to engage the king. Ya kwamba Esther aliulizia wale marafiki zake waombe pamoja na yeye kabla ya yeye kwenda kumhusisha mfalme. She was the queen. Yeye alikuwa ni malkia. But she knew I am the queen but I need God to convince my husband to favor me. Alikuwa ni malkia lakini alihitaji Mungu ili aweze kupata kibali Nehemiah was the cup bearer. Nehemiah alikuwa ni mtunzi wa mfalme. He was very close to the king. Alikuwa karibu sana na mfalme. But he acknowledged that he needed God for the king to favor him. Ya kwamba alisema alihitaji Mungu ili mfalme ampe kibali. And this is because whenever you pray, nini kwa sababu wakati ambapo unapoomba, your attention is towards God to help you. Ni kwamba makinika yako ni kwa Mungu ili aweze kukusaidia. And you are able to focus on the greatness of God. Na unaweza kuelekeza katika ukuu wa Mungu. So four things that Nehemiah did. Mambo manne ambayo Nehemiah alifanya. Which we can borrow from for his prayer to be a success in rebuilding the walls. Ila ambayo tunaweza chukua mfano ili uweze kujenga ukuta. And we can also start doing the same to finish those assignments. Na pia tunaweza chukua hiyo tufanye ili tuweze kumalizia ile yale majukumu. In verse 5, Nehemiah chapter 1 verse 5. Mstari wa 5. Then I said, O Lord God of heaven, the great and awesome God who keeps his covenant of unfailing love with those who love him and obey his commands. So, number 1, ya kwanza. Nehemiah based his requests on God. God's character. Ya kwamba yeye alipeana maombi yake kulingana na tabia ya Mungu. Base your prayer on God's character. Linganisha maombi yako na tabia ya Mungu. He told God who he is. Aliambia Mungu yeye ni nani? He told God you are the God of heaven. Wewe ni Mungu wa mbinguni. You are a great God. Wewe ni Mungu mkuu. You are an awesome God. Wewe ni Mungu mzuri. You keep covenant. Unaweka ahadi. You are unfail your love is unfailing. Upendo wako hauishi. You have that assignment you don't know how to go about it? Uko na haya majukumu haujui utafanya namna gani? Oh you have that great need which is putting you into disgrace? Ama uko na ile na hiyo hitaji ambayo inakuwa katika I want to encourage you this morning. Please your request on God's character. Eka maombi yako kulingana na tabia ya Mungu. Pray like a person who knows that God will answer. Omba kama mtu ambaye anaelewa Mungu ataweza kujibu. Tell God, God, I am expecting you to answer me. Ambia Mungu natarajia uweze kunijibu. And why I'm expecting you to answer me? Kwa sababu gani natarajia unijibu? Is because you are a good. Kwa sababu wewe ni mwema. Your loving kindness is better than life. Ya kwamba upendo wako ni zaidi. You answer me because you are a good not because I am good. Unanijibu kwa sababu wewe ni mwema sio kwa sababu ni mwema. In other words, you are exhorting God. Kwa maneno mengine unamuinua Mungu. You are acknowledging that you will never qualify anything from God. Ya kwamba unakubaliana kwamba wewe haufai. But because of his goodness 
confessed like we, are, like we have just confessed that his faithfulness your faithfulness cannot be measured that you go and tell God your faithfulness can never be measured and I know you are going to be faithful to me I know you will not let me down I know you will remove this shame from me I know you will remove this disgrace from me I know you selected me you chose me you need to know all those things for you to tell God about them so Nehemiah knew the secret. He based his request on God's character. Number two, something else that Nehemiah did. He confessed the sins of his people and his own sins. Nehemiah acknowledged that he had sinned together with his his people. And maybe you can project for us verse 6 and 7. This is what he said. Listen to my prayer. Look down and see, my, see me praying night and day for your people Israel. I confess we have sinned against you. Yes, even my own family and I have sinned. We have sinned terribly by not obeying the commands, decrees, and regulations that you gave us through your servant Moses. You want to engage God on that issue you have been praying about? Run to confess your sins. The ones you know and the ones you don't know. Tell God you want there to be nothing between you and him. And we know better for those sins that when we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us. It wasn't Nehemiah's fault that Israel went into captivity. Maybe he wasn't even born when it happened. Maybe Maybe he was born in captivity. Maybe Yet he included himself in the sins of his people. Like he said, I have been part of the problem. We are in a season where we are talking, whatever it is that you are talking about your government. Okay, about our government. I hope you are finding yourself there. You are a team prayer. Then if you have done nothing wrong with the concerns to that, you are talking about it negatively. The Bible is telling us to pray for those in authority. God likes it when we don't remove ourselves from the problem and we want to accuse others. Let's make it a habit to confess our sins even as we make our petitions before God. Number point number four, number three, what Nehemiah did. Claim the promises of God. He claimed the promises of God. Nehemiah prayed to the Lord saying, Please remember what you told your servant Moses. Can you imagine Nehemiah was telling God to remember? Just in case God you have forgotten. Please remember what you told your servant. He was not leaving anything to chance. Because he wanted to connect himself to that promise. This is what he said. Verse 8. God you warned through Moses that if we were unfaithful, we would lose the land of Israel. But he also promised that if you would repent, you would give it back to us. So he wanted to claim the promise. Therefore he reminded God what he told Moses. That even they, for, they confess, he will forgive them. And even if they are in the uttermost parts of the world, he would bring them back. And now they had come back to Jerusalem. But because they had been away for a long time, they found the enemy had come and taken advantage and had brought down all the walls and had burned 
the gates and it was so disgraceful and the, and the people asking where is their god Nehemiah engaged god know what god has said about your situation do you know what God has said about the, the challenge you are going through right now? Have you ever been given a bunch of 20 keys? And then you are told to go and open your office. And you are trying to open the office. Before you get to key number 5, you, you start with the one you started because you don't know where you started. I am trying to say when you don't know what you are claiming you are not different from that person who has got 10 keys they are not labored therefore you are trying to open and none of them is opening you need to know what God is saying about your situation maybe you come here and pray with the worship team you are talking about your parent who is sick at home do you know what God has said about the health, your health and the health of your family you come here you are talking about financial breakthrough do you know what God has said about your well being and your wealth and have you complied? Yesterday we had a DOI meeting. A few among the few, many things we were told. Problems will always be there. There will always be a problem. Once you know there is a problem, wait for the instructions. Then obey the instructions. When you are given the bunch of keys, the many promises in the word of God, identify the one relevant to your situation. Then go holding it like this to God. And you are telling God you have said. And if you can remember the verse, tell him where it is said. It is okay. Remind him what he has said. It means you are walking with him step by step. You can hold him accountable. His faithfulness is, is reliable. Know what God has said about your situation. This verse makes me so sad. Hosea 4 verse 6 in the New Living Translation. I know it's a verse we like quoting. Unfortunately, we only like quoting part of it. Today we are going to read the whole verse. We only like quoting the first part of that verse. My people are being destroyed because lack of knowledge. Ah, can we read together? Today we read the New Living Translation. My people are being destroyed because they don't know me. Since you priests refuse to know me, I refuse to recognize you as my priests. Since you have forgotten the laws of your God, I will forget to bless your children. Hold that verse. Lack of knowledge. The Bible says that we are a royal priesthood. We are the priests. And the word of God is telling us that you have refused to know God. You have refused to know what God has said about your situation. I refuse to recognize you as priests. You will not get your portion because you don't even know what it's all about. And the last part of it makes me very sad. Can you imagine God saying, I will forget to bless your children? Just because you have decided not to know. It is very dangerous not to know. You better know what God has said about your situation. Otherwise, when you are so ignorant, and how do you know? I hope it is you read the word of God. 
And many people have talked about the importance of the word of God. Na watu wengi wamenena kuhusu maana ya And I promise you Jesus starting you will still hear it again on this altar. Ya kama utaisikia katika madhabahu haya. That it is for your benefit that you know what God has said about your situation. Ni kwa manufaa yako wewe kujua kile ambacho Mungu anasema kwa ajili yako. Now Nehemiah Nehemiah has finished engaging God. Amemaliza kumhusisha Mungu. We have said tumesema He based his request on God's character. He confessed the sins he was aware. He claimed the promises of God. And then he was very specific in what he was asking. He knew what he wants. Unfortunately, a number of us we are very reze- we make what is called reze prayers. You go and tell God God please bless me. Unaambia Mungu tafadhali nibariki. Na anakubless na utajuaje amekubless? How will you know? You go and tell me God I want you to bless me with money. Nataka unibariki na pesa. I want you to bless me with good health. Nataka unibariki na afya njema. I want you to bless my children. Bariki watoto wangu. I want you to give my daughter a job. Upatie mtoto wangu kazi. I want you to give to bless my business. I want a turnover of unamwadikia namba na tena ile ya Mamene zeros ile unaanza 000,000, koma alafu unaanza na hiyo ingine thinking big and being very specific on the blessing you want from God kujua na ukua na wiki pekee kila ambacho unahitaji kutoka kwa Mungu Nehemiah was very specific Nehemiah alikuwa na wakipekee very quickly as i wind up ninapomalizia let's go to Nehemiah chapter 2 Mlango wa pili wa Nehemiah. Verse 5 to 8. Msari wa 5. Now Nehemiah is done with God. So ashamalizana na Mungu. Now he has gone to the king. Sasa ameenda kwa mfalme. He was very specific. Alikuwa na kitu amelenga lengo fulani. Verse 5 and 6. Msari wa 5 na 6. And I said to the king. Na nikamwambia mfalme. If it pleases the king. Kama inampendeza mfalme. And if your servant has found favor in your sight. Kama mtumishi wake amepata kibali ndani yako. I ask that you send me to Judah. Na naomba ukanitume Judah. To the city of my father's tomb. Katika mji wa baba yangu. That I may rebuild it. Ili niweze kuujenga. He was not mixing his request. Hakuwa anachanganyisha maoni yake. He wanted permission. Alitaka to be away from his job station. Ili aende afanye kazi. To go and do a few things. Afanye mambo fulani. Next verse. Then the king said to me, Na mfalme akaniambia, The queen also sitting beside him. I love that bit. Yake. How long will your journey be? Je, safari yako itatukomba gani? And when dani? will you return? Na utarudi lini? So it pleased the king to send me and set him a time. Ilimpendeza mfalme kunituma na He was very specific. Alikuwa His request was met verse 7. Furthermore, I said to the king. If it pleases the king. Let letters be given to me. Wacha barua ziandikwe kwa the governors of the region beyond the river. Wale watumishi wa wale They must permit me to pass through till I come to Judah. Waniruhusu niweze kupita mpaka nifike Yuda. I want to believe this time when uh, Nehemiah was praying. Wakati huo Nehemiah alipokuwa He was also doing a research. Alikuwa akifanya Who do I need to talk to for me to be Able to get where I am going. Nahitaji kuongelesha nani ili niweze kupita nifike pale nahitaji. So number two. cha pili. He wanted letters addressed to the governors. Alitaka barua ziandikiwe I told you it matters whom you know. Inamaanisha ina ina Nehemiah knew he didn't, didn't know the governors. Alijua hawajui wale governors. But he knew his boss knew the governors. Lakini anajua mfalme alijua governors. So he went in a humble way. Akaenda kwa njia ya favor. Na akaitisha hiyo kibali. So he asked for it. Number one, he asked for permission. Akaulizia. Number two, he asked letters to the governors. Chapili akaitisha barua. And number three in verse 8. Na ya tatu, mstari wa 8. And a letter to Asaph, the king of the king's forest, that he must give me timber to make beams for the gates of the citadel which pertains to the temple, for the city wall, and for the house that I will occupy. And the king granted them to me according to the good heart of my God upon me. Amen. He was very specific. Alikuwa na lengo kile kipekee. As he was facing the king. Alipokuwa kimwe He had already sorted it out with God. Alikuwa ashapanga na Mungu. He had asked for favor. Alikuwa ameitisha kibali. And I am imagining Nehemiah. 
When permission was given and the letters were, were to be given and now another letter. Oh my goodness, he knew it was the, the heart of his God which had acted on his behalf. And because the gracious heart of my God was on me, the king granted my request. Becoming specific with your request. And there is another character who never mixed up words. In the book of 1 Chronicles 4, 9-10, the story of Jabez. Now Jabez was more honorable than his brothers and his mother called his name Jabez saying, hold it there. You remember what I told you, what people talk about you. His mother has decided to label him pain. But thank God Jabez knew about a God. He decided to bypass the mother. And this is the prayer he made. And Jabez called on the God of Israel saying, Oh, that you would bless me indeed. Very specific. And enlarge my territory. That your hand would be with me. And that you would keep me from evil. That I may not cause pain. So, God granted what he requested. If God did it for Nehemiah, if God did it for Jabez, God can do it for you. I said God can do it for you. Forget about what they have said. God, if God be for you, it will come to pass. How I pray that there will be many testimonies of lady brethren saying, so God granted my request. I am calling for the testimonies from the tent, from up there, from down here, that you from today, you start engaging God. You remind him about his character, his never failing character. You, you will confess your sins. You will be be very specific even as you claim his promises. God wants to repair every broken thing in your life. He wants to restore that which the enemy has taken. He wants you to repossess that, was, that which was yours and the enemy has taken it. And he's giving you an invitation. He's giving you an invitation. Come! Like a person who knows me. That you can trust him. That you don't have to lean on your own understanding. Let me encourage you. Maybe you are saying, I have prayed, I don't know for how many years. The enemies. Resistance should be an encouragement that God is doing something significant in your life. Amen. If you, and I want to encourage you to go and read the story of Nehemiah. It is true the king granted his requests. But there were still very many resistances. But he kept on reminding the God who did it then. Even here, he's going to help us. And he employed every form of strategy. At some point, they were rebuilding the walls. One hand was holding the spear. And the other one was holding the stone. Because you have a full time enemy. And the devil still believes you are a candidate for hell. You have to keep on fighting every day. You have to keep on fighting. And your fight is not physical. You can engage the supernatural. 
and God will fight it for you. The enemy will oppose any form of restoration in your life. But be like Nehemiah. Stay focused and prayerful and you will overcome and the Lord has given us one more promise Psalms 32 verse 8 and I want to add up there Psalms 32 verse 8 in NIV the Lord has promised to do three things even as you continue persisting persisting in the prayer and persisting in doing something. Nehemiah did not edit in prayer. He took another step. He went to engage the king. And by the time we are adding the book of Nehemiah, he had become a general. He had become a team player. He had raised many other people to come help rebuild the walls. It is as you persist that your assignment you become clearer and clearer. And, and the Lord has given us his promise. He has given us his promise. And I want us to read together the promise. Psalms 32 verse 8. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my loving eye on you. Hold that verse. You want to do that mission impossible? You must be ready to hear the instructions. Nehemiah was so alert when he got to Jerusalem. He first of all did a mapping during the night. Mapping usiku. Meaning he had the instructions. You don't just go and tell the people there, I have come. I have come to rebuild. Because immediately they had what he has come to do. There were people who were out to make sure he doesn't. You must be ready to hear the instructions and you must be ready to obey. The Lord has given his word to instruct you to teach you and to counsel you tell your neighbor tell your neighbor God will instruct you God will teach you and God will counsel you. Yours is to obey. You move out from where God is telling you this is the way. It becomes a setup of frustration. But when you are where God wants you to be, it becomes his responsibility to fight it out for you. You can engage God as your father. He knows your name. He knows your need. He knows your pain. And he's making an invitation. I want you to involve me in this one. I don't know what is disturbing you this morning. I I don't know what has punched your peace this morning. The Lord wants to identify with your situation. And the Lord wants to fight your battle. Are you willing to be instructed? Are you willing to be taught? Are you willing to heed to his counsel? His yoke is easy. And his burden is right. This morning we can engage our God by reminding him what he has said about our situation. Are you there this morning? For sure, for sure. There is that issue. You are feeling so discouraged about it. You have prayed about it. We are not giving up. We will still pray about it this morning. Are you there? And you want us to pray one more time together. If you lift up your hand, we are going to tell God about it. We are going to tell God about it. That we are not giving up. And we are still waiting. With every head bound. If you are there. 
And there is that issue we want us to believe God together. I want you to to lift up your hand. The Lord knows it. Lift it like you are serious. Lift it like you know that God knows your need. Father, we are lifting up our hands. Because we have known you as a good God. A caring God. A kind God. Today, we stop trying to figure it out. We stop trying to use our own imaginations. And like Nehemiah, we want to bring it to you. And I want to stand with every brother and every sister that is lifting up their hand. And they are saying, my heart is up. God because you know my need I pray that God you may meet that need not because we deserve it but because you are a good not because we have not sinned we are asking you Lord to forgive us forgive our sins those we know and those which we don't know oh God we know you have said you are able and we are telling you you are able and I'm calling for the, those testimonies this morning that God like you did for Jabez like you did for Nehemiah our God you will grant to my brothers and my sisters and they will bring a testimony in your house I pray that God because you are a faithful it will come to pass we consider you faithful we call you good we call you mighty we call you able. We call you awesome. And we receive from you our good God. And Lord, you are changing our story. And you are clarifying our assignments because you are a faithful God. Thank you for hearing our prayer. Thank you and we celebrate you in advance because God, we consider you faithful. And we pray this in Jesus' name. And before I sit down, maybe you are there. We are talking about this God. And for sure you know you have never given him your life. That he may manage your life for you. The Bible says that he is standing at the door of your heart. And if anyone opens the door he will enter and dine with him are you there you have never given your life to Jesus and you would want us to pray for you today that you may give your life to Jesus that from today you can have a father you can run to are you there and you would want us to pray for you if you lift up your hand we will see it and pray for you you want to sing this morning that you have decided to follow Jesus thank you for that hand are you there lift up your hand from up there from the tent the ministry team members you want to give your life to Jesus thank you for that hand are you there you want to give your life to Jesus if you can come over we want to pray for you if you are there we are not in a hurry if only for you we can hold it and pray for you. You want to give your life to Jesus. If you can't come over, we want to pray for you. Yes, come. We will wait for you. If you lift up your hand, we want to pray for you. You want to say today, I have decided to follow Jesus. Are you there? And you have decided to follow Jesus. Just join the rest at the frontier, even as we pray for you. That you have decided today Leo. to follow Jesus. Are you there? It is not late. We are not in a hurry. We want to pray for you. The angels are celebrating in heaven because of these three who have said yes to Jesus Christ. And we can also join up with them and celebrate with them. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. Come on, celebrate Jesus! Celebrate Jesus! Thank you, thank you. Yes, you are not late. You can come over. Come, come, come. Come and join them. 
We want to pray for you. You want to give your life to Jesus. This 28th day of May and say I have decided to follow Jesus. If you are coming just come. We will wait for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. happened is so significant that angels are celebrating and I would also want us all of us to arise and join up with these four who have decided to follow Jesus and they are helping them confess it is that Daniel not turning back so we will make that confession again as they wind up whatever they are doing and then you give Jesus a shout for shout. giving this form a reason to smile from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light from being a sinner to a saint a servant to a son come on celebrate Jesus